Strangers in the night. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Mary Freudenberg, board president. Uh, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us online. With me in the beautiful Cherokee room is John Harris, chair of the finance committee, our wonderful general manager, Jim Whitmore, and our treasurer for life, Jim Ungaro. And with that, let's get started. No worries. It's been too long since I did this. No worries. Awesome. All right, so let's get started. So today's presentation, uh, the agenda is to quickly go over the budget press process, prep process and overview. I'll introduce the finance committee members, give a COVID financial update, provide an executive summary, and then I'll turn it over to our general manager, Jim Whitmore, to go over the highlights, income expenses, reserve spending, what next steps are, and how you can go ahead and submit questions after the presentation. Next slide, Robert. Okay, so a few things to remember. Uh, the whole budget process, which as you can imagine starts several months in advance of uh, the October deadline when we present it to members is, it's kicked off with a budget um, guidance letter that comes from the board to the finance committee and the general manager. Again, it's just guidance, keeping in mind that the general manager and the staff are who actually drive the, the budget prep process. And the GM and the controller meet to kick off the process with all the department managers, each of whom develop their own budgets in consultation, of course, with the general manager and the controller. They meet with admin, general, man general maintenance, the clubhouse, staff, food and beverage, golf operations and golf maintenance. And then the finance committee, along with the general manager and controller, meet separately with each department manager to just review the budget, make clarifications, and in some instances, actually go ahead and adjust uh, and make changes to the budget. And then finally, the finance committee in concert with the general manager arrives at a budget and then they make that budget presentation and recommendation to the board. So the finance committee members, of course, if they were here, I would introduce each one individually and ask them to stand up. But John Harris, as I mentioned, is here. Bob McGinnis, Steve Meadows, Mark Stevens, Craig Harding, Bob Coffin, Marty Oliver, Keith Butler, Cara Blank, and then of course the board liaison, Jim Ongaro. Uh, for those of you that don't know, we probably have about anywhere between 200 or 250 years of experience in uh, legal accounting and the financial industry. So we're very fortunate to have such talented people on our finance committee. Okay, so where we are as far as the COVID update goes. So thankfully we've been able to continue to manage in a fiscally responsible manner throughout the pandemic. We received uh, $649,000 in what's called the CARES employee retention credits. And this is a credit, it's not a loan, uh, the CARES Act actually stands for the Coronavirus Aid, Relief and Economic Security Act. And basically what that was, it was an effort by the government to encourage businesses to keep employees on their payroll uh, you know, during the uh, restrictions on operations. 
So at this point in time, we're forecasting that by the end of the year, we'll have a net operating surplus of roughly $952,000. The majority of that is the 650 approximate dollars from the CARES credit along with $120,000 from increased revenue in golf, which we are uh, thinking is contributing to the fact that the course is in better condition, we've got uh, friendlier staff, and we've the number of capital improvements made to the course. And then the remainder of it, which is roughly 180,000, comes from uh, a labor savings because we had to reduce our operations during the pandemic and we're also currently understaffed. So for the executive summary, at this point, we are recommending an assessment increase of 2.06% in 2022. So that comes out to $72 for improved lot owners and 43 for unimproved lot owners. Uh, I'll do the math real quick. That comes out to $6 a month for improved lot owners. And the recommendation comes uh, with being consistent with not only our strategic plan, but also our comprehensive master plans, which we refer to every opportunity that we can, uh, our vision and mission of promoting, providing, preserving, and sustaining the Conesty lifestyle. Also, this increase allows us to adequately fund the capital and infrastructure reserves, which means that when these uh, capital items or our infrastructure needs timely repairs and maintenance, our amenities need to be fixed, that means that we've got the money there on hand. And it, what it means to members is that they don't get hit with a special assessment. Also, the reliance on the amenity fees to support operations is being reduced by 2022 because the funding that goes into the amenity reserve fund should be used uh, just to maintain and enhance our amenities, not to fund day-to-day -day operations. So we made a commitment over time to reduce that, and hopefully by 2024, we should not have any reliance on the amenity reserve fund. And then lastly, which is, is really very important, is this uh, recommended assessment increase allows us to bring all of our non-tipped hourly staff to $15 an hour, which from a marketing perspective is always a good thing to say that, you know, we, are, we qualify as a living wage employer. And then servers will be raised from eight to $10 an hour. Uh, servers were raised from eight to $10 an hour in 2021 and there was a 3% raise for all salaried staff. Next slide. And before I go over, uh, turn it over to Jim, uh, I just wanna take a couple of minutes to talk through this slide. So the operating principles, which are going to be uh, officially added to our board policies manual, and they are balanced member priorities, take care of what we own and plan for our future and build uh, solid relationships. Um, again, those operating principles are really what drives almost everything that we do. So when the finance committee starts this process, um, besides having to manage in a fiscally prudent manner um, to make sure that we've got the reserves to care for what we own, and plan for our future. They also take into account the fact that everybody in Conesty values the amenities differently, and we all have varying degrees of financial stability and disposable income. Um, the Finance Committee, besides focusing on all the member priorities, they work very hard to identify and manage risk. Are our reserve accounts funded adequately? Do we have the right amount of insurance? Are we making the most sound investments? And this all goes hand in hand with maintaining and enhancing property values, which let's face it, that's what's most important to all of us, right? And then finally, the capital items. Capital items have to be maintained. They have to be planned for when they break down. 
And, you know, that's what the focus is when they go through the budget process. Um, I would say if anyone has any questions to submit them, but <laughs> that's not going to work in this type of forum, but we will tell you how to submit those questions at the end. So with that, I appreciate your time and I'm gonna turn it over to Jim. Thank you, Mary. So let's go over the numbers that uh, Mary was sort of talking about. We'll give you this more specifics on the 2022 budget. So if Robert, to go to the next slide. So based on the new uh, annual assessment, we will be bringing in roughly $5.6 million in assessment revenue uh, from the improved and unimproved lot owners. The other income that we will be generating come from property fees, golf, F&B, and wellness will roughly be about $3.5 million. So we'll be bringing in $9 million, give or take, in total revenue uh, for the 2022 budget. Our operating expenses uh, will come in at approximately $6.7 million, and we will be transferring $2,381,000 into the reserve fund from your assessment. But we'll also be spending $2,294,000 in the reserves, which includes amenities. We'll go further into those uh, individual expenditures later in the presentation. But the overall increase to the reserves will be $87,000 year end. This is just a quick chart to show you what uh, the assessment will look like. Currently, your assessment is $3,498 for improved lot with a $72 increase, $570 for an improved lot, and $2,142 for an unimproved lot. And that calculation basically is 60%. The unimproved lots pay 60% of what the improved lots uh, pay, and that's part of our governing documents that require that. So let's look at uh, sort of what drove the different uh, increase and decrease, uh, increases and decreases in the assessment. Anything with parentheses around it means that that helped reduce your assessment. So actually the biggest factor going into 2022 that's helping keep your assessment down is that we are seeing a $151,000 improvement in revenue in the golf operations, which is consistent with what's happening so far in 2021, 20, uh, 2020 and 2021 as well. Um, one of the advantages, I guess, if there is one to the pandemic is it did help increase a lot of outdoor activities, golf being one of them. So that has generated an extra $151,000 budgeted going into 2022, which is reduce, helping reduce your assessment by almost 3%. Uh, administrative revenue is also increasing. Um, that is part of the tenant fees, the boat slip rentals and RV rentals. That'll be going up $88,000 total between all those which helps reduce the assessment by 1.6%. The biggest increase is the employee expense, and Mary talked a little bit about that. Um, we have roughly about 65 uh, full-time equivalent uh, employees right now. Sometimes we carry more than that, but we have not been able to fully staff, and obviously we're not fully operational at this point due to the pandemic as well. But looking into next year, we're hoping to do that, and that increase of getting everyone up to the minimum hourly rate of $15 an hour is going to roughly cost around $174,000 uh, for next year, which is a 3.14% increase. But again, well worth it. And based on the current supply and demand, uh, something we would have to do whether we wanted to or not, to be honest with you. Another little change is on right now, a lot combination fees. Um, all that money basically goes into our operating account. Uh, going forward, we want to take 25% of those combination fees for the lot combination and put that into the amenity fund, which is the same thing we do for lot sales and other uh, things too. So uh, that has a little slight reduction of 0.32% of increase in the assessment uh, because normally we'd get 10,000 for each one that we're gonna take 25% of that and put in the amenity fund. Uh, the reduction in the amenity fee supporting operations, Mary talked a little bit about that as well. That's continuing uh, on an ongoing basis going back many years now uh, where we've been trying to get that down to zero. This budget will get us down to $50,000 and in two more years, 2024, we will not be relying on any of the amenity fund to help support operations. So that's an impact of almost half a percent increase. And the capital funding increase, that's 3%. That's a calculation that we do every year uh, to help us offset inflationary um, potential. Uh, hopefully inflation will become sort of back to normal. We're in a hyperinflation to some extent right now. 
Uh, but again, most experts believe that that will start leveling off, but we will see if the experts are correct. Uh, and then we do the same thing in the, infra in the infrastructure uh, fund. We do a, a generic 3% increase there for inflationary purposes as well. So you add the two of them up, it's $42,000, which basically adds 0.7% into the assessment for next year. Next slide, Robert, please. There you go, thank you. Uh, clubhouse utilities, uh, those are some things that uh, we've added basically. Uh, we've added more Wi-Fi location spots around all the different parks. We've added, uh, we've made a stronger Wi-Fi and added extenders too. Uh, so that has an overall cost of $18,000 uh, going into next year for those additional spots. Director and officer insurance increase was $21,000 which is a 0.37% increase. We did also increase our personal property uh, blanket coverage as well. Uh, so we, we had done an analysis on what we thought all the buildings were worth and felt we were a little underinsured. So we increased that by a couple million dollars so that we could have uh, sufficient blanket coverage for our, for our buildings. Uh, permits and licenses are going up $33,000. Uh, that's just a bunch of different software and, and licenses that we own between Microsoft 365, Gatehouse, Golf Cart GPS, uh, Northstar, just many, many things that we have licenses in our software to use. Uh, the golf cart, we have a new golf cart fleet. Uh, the old fleet at least expired, so we had to lease new carts. Uh, that's an increase of $14,000 a year or 0.25% increase in the assessment. And then all the rest of them are all just uh, small increases here and there throughout the budget, which only equaled $8,500 or 0.17. So the overall additional expenses going into 2022 is $114,000, which is a 2.06% increase that we're recommending to apply going into next year. So we like to break this down in a chart so it gives a good understanding to everyone in a simple format of where your money is really going. Because uh, there's a lot of discussion every year about different things. But what you'll see here on this chart is the highest percent of your assessment is actually going in to the reserve fund, which are all the things that we need to keep the community operational. That's all our capital equipment, the road infrastructure for repaving, management, um, all the different things that we that we need to maintain on a year over year basis that's 26 percent of your assessment administration is 21 percent general maintenance which is basically spencer brown's crew which are all the uh, people that do all the work around the community is 21 percent uh, the clubhouse and wellness center is 10 percent golf is eight percent security is eight percent and food and beverage which is the when it, that gets beat up every year, it's only 7% of your overall assessment. So again, making any drastic changes in food and beverage might help a little bit, but it's not gonna make a huge difference to lower your assessment because it's such a small percentage of your overall assessment. So actually the two amenities, golf and food and beverage that get the most discussion are only 15% of your overall assessment. So this chart, this gives you a good uh, view, a visual of that. So we break it down just by a dollar and cents perspective because we couldn't fit it all in one slide. It gets too busy. You have $917 of your assessment. And I'm gonna just go over the improved lots because it's a little easier and that's the majority of people. It's $917. Administration is $739. Uh, general maintenance is 745. Clubhouse wellness and the pool is 365. Golf is 269. And interest in us, security is the same, 269. <laughs> Then food and beverage is 266, which you'll see all adds up to your the recommended annual assessment of $3,570 for 2022. This is a chart that we show every year. And just what this really shows is how consistent we are in, in managing our expenses. It might be a little bit hard to read, but basically you go back um, six years now and we look at our employee expenses versus all our other expenses, they're almost exactly the same. They've went anywhere from 65 to 66%. They, they float 1% one way or the other. So you go back six, seven years ago, you know, we've added about two or 300 homes since then, um, and we're doing it with the same amount of people. So we are a very efficient operation, and we hope to continue that as well.
So let's look at the, the two revenue producing uh, departments, which is the golf and food and beverage. We'll start in the golf. And the slide's a little busy because we have to sort of figure out what we're trying to um, judge it and compare it to because we haven't had a normal year in a couple of years now, unfortunately. So we are looking at the 2019 actual, to use that as a, a helping guide, the 2020 actual, the 2021 reforecast, because that's what we're going to use now for 2021, and then the budget for 2022. So you see in the next line, the employee expenses um, were $803,000 in 2019. Um, in 2020, there, the actual is 871. Uh, the reforecast for this year is 813, um, but that uh, for a large part of this year, at the beginning of the year, we did not have a full golf maintenance uh, department. They were short about three or four people at one time. Uh, so going into next year will be $913,000, uh, which is uh, about $50,000 over the 2021 actual. But most of that is bringing all those people um, in golf maintenance, especially that were not at $15 an hour and bringing all those people up to $15 an hour that work on the golf maintenance crew. That's the majority of this increase. Um, the other expenses, you'll see again, 466 in the actual last year, we had a normal year in 2019. And we're looking at 528 for expenses uh, at the end of this year as the actual, and then 543,000 going into next year, which is mostly what we're projecting to be increases in um, the golf cart lease, which we know, and then chemicals, fertilizer, chemicals, and fuel in the golf maintenance portion of the, of the golf budget. So if you look at the, uh, the overall net expenses over revenue, you'll see the improvement between uh, 2019, 2020 actual, 2022 budget. And again, the 2021 reforecast is a little off because of the uh, less expense through at one point in both golf maintenance and in the golf shop as well. Statistic to look here too, which shows, that like Mary said in the slide that we talked about golf, why we've seen such a big rounds of golf that have been playing, that are being played. This is significant to understand not only the pandemic that's helped, but the capital projects that we've done the last few years and the changeover in staffing that's helped increase, especially the outside rounds. So you'll see there, it's almost a 7,000 round increase from 2019 to 2022 budget, which is consistent with what we think the reforecast is gonna be. Forget that math, but that's like a 30% increase in rounds. So it's a significant amount. And then like we talked about a couple of slides ago, it's, it's about $150,000 in additional revenue. So how did this all happen? How is the budgeted 2022 revenue up Oh, I said 30, I saw, up 28% over 2019. Um, as many of you know, we did the driving range project a few years ago, um, which has made a huge difference in bringing in extra revenue. Uh, after the renovation, we are bringing in 100, oh, went backwards. We're bringing 167, 167% increase in our range fees from 2019 to what we're forecasting for 2022. Um, so it's a huge increase. 42,000 know, percentages sound like a big number, but it's still a lot of money. It's $42,000 versus 17 in 2020 and 15 in 2019. So I think if I remember, I'd have to go back to the presentation. I think when we did the uh, driving range project and we uh, gave you the numbers, I think we said it was gonna be like a 30 or $35,000 potential increase in revenue. And we're pretty darn close to what we said we were gonna do. So um, that's a good, good sign. Uh, Again, we can't take all the credit. Uh, rounds of golf are up over 27% uh, since 2019, uh, but the National Golf Foundation is reporting a 24% 24, 24 increase in rounds played over 2017 and 19. Uh, we don't have the newest number, but that number is probably even a, a lot higher now because of the pandemic the last couple of years. Um, I think I saw one a couple of weeks ago that was like 32%. So hopefully that will continue you know, when and if we get past the pandemic, that the people that came back out to start playing golf will continue to do so. Um, the golf course has been in great condition this year. Uh, Tom Shepard and his crew have been done very well uh, working with Kurt and his guys to um, guys and girls to uh, keep the course in good condition all year. Um, we are also proposing for the golf members who are going to raise the dues 
their membership dues for golf by 3% going up into next year, um, which is consistent with what we did the year before. And we're basing our numbers on um, 166 um, memberships is what we're budgeting for. Um, we're at about 162, I think, as of last month, it fluctuates. But so we're pretty confident we can pick up another four or five members going into next year. Um, and then we are also raising the range membership uh, for a single from 400 to 425 and for a family 500 to 525. And we have 70 memberships for the range membership as well. In food and beverage, we're going back to 2000, back in time, back to the future, going back to 2019, because again, that's the only um, normal year we've had. I mean, even that is questionable whether it's a normal year, because that was the first year right after we reopened the clubhouse after the renovation, we did a, a huge amount of business compared to the year of 2018. But uh, we think that's a fair analysis. Um, so you'll see that we're budgeting the same amount of revenue that we did in 2019 for 2022 budget of $909,000. Uh, consistent on our cost of goods sold at 40%, uh, which is 362. I think there's a rounding error there somehow. Uh, employee expenses, that one is a big one here in food and beverage, obviously. It's one of our uh, larger um, departments as far as the number of people. Uh, so that 78,000 is basically related to the $15 an hour bringing everybody mostly the people in the kitchen. And then obviously uh, the server is going from eight to $10 an hour at a significant uh, increase in our employee expenses, as well as the 6% increase in our group health insurance as well. And we've also found some more efficiencies as well, which is good news that we feel we can lower the other expenses by 170,000 roughly. Uh, so again, you'll see here that um, our net expenses over revenue uh, in 2019 was 378. We're budgeting for 417 in 2022. Uh, but again, most of that being uh, the employee expenses, but then improvements by the other expenses. Yep, you're good. Thank you. You can go to the next one. I got ahead of myself as well. So when you look at food and beverage, it's one of the things that's always brought up, you know, why do we lose money in food and beverage? So we, I wanted to give you some comparisons and some uh, ways to analyze food and beverage. Um, so the CFPOA net F&B expenses equals 8% of the annual assessment. Now, McGladry RSM, who's the, one of the largest uh, auditing firms in the country and also does over 300 clubs in Florida, um, the average is 18% and the lowest in the survey is 13%. So the lowest club in Florida runs a 13% assessment percentage for the food and beverage operation. We run 8%. So looking at that, we're, we run 38% more efficiently in our food and beverage operation than even the lowest in the McGladry study of 300 clubs in Florida. So instead of talking a lot about the negativity sometimes in food and beverage, I think we should be looking at how efficient we are doing it um, and say, thanks everybody that's making that happen because it is a very efficient operation. So this is um, the Mary uh, slide. <laughs> We're gonna call this the Mary Memorial slide someday, but she invented this slide a couple of years ago. Uh, and part of it, I don't know if you mind me telling you, but because you were having some trouble even understanding how all the reserves worked and you said, hey, I need to chart this so I can understand how this works. And when she showed it to everyone, I'm like, wow, this is, this is a good tool. So we've been using a tool ever since. So basically we have four reserve funds and sometimes they get interspersed and people talk differently about the different ones, but there are four distinct separate reserve funds. The first one is the amenity reserve. And how is that funded? The amenity reserve is funded at every time a home within Conesty Falls sells, uh, we collect a $10,000 fee, and actually it's $10,162, uh, from every home when they're sold. That goes into the amenity fund. We also put any lot sales of CFPOA lots that we sell throughout the year, that goes into the amenity fund as well. And now we're gonna be putting 25% of a co lot combination fee in here as well. We will need to update this slide next year. Um, and then of course, any interest earned on the fund balances during the year continue to go back into the amenity reserve. And the amenity reserve is very specific in our documents of what it can be used for. And it can be used for the construction and or addition or modifications to any of our amenities. And 
partially right now, we can designate part of it to support operations, which we're hoping here in the next couple of years, that will go away. Uh, but this is a fund that obviously is an important fund. It helped pay for the renovation of the golf clubhouse, new, or the clubhouse numerous years ago, three years ago. And hopefully here in the next few months when we bring a potential activity and wellness center to you, a large percentage of that project will be, could be funded out of this amenity reserve because the money adds up quick. Uh, the capital reserve is the second biggest reserve. Um, and that's basically, that's basically funded out of your HOA assessments, which we talked about a couple slides ago. It's actually the largest percentage of your assessment. And that basically takes any physical asset that we have that's over $2,500 and has a useful, life, a useful life of less than 30 years, which when you think about it, it's a ton of stuff. It's all our golf course irrigation, our golf course uh, equipment, our community maintenance equipment, our roads equipment, uh, all the different trucks you see drive around doing work, the pool accessories, heaters, uh, filters, pumps, uh, tennis courts, pickleball courts, security equipment, IT equipment. I mean, it's over 500 items are listed in our capital reserve that have a, uh, that have a, a replacement cost of over $2,500 and, and 30 year useful life or less. So it's a, it's a large percentage of our assessment. It's also one that is scrutinized every year. We go through that capital reserve each item year over year and determine which items have to be either moved forward or moved back. Is, there, is the replacement value listed at the right price? And that makes it difficult in today's world to uh, determine that. Um, you know, piece of equipment that were X amount of dollars six months ago or X plus Y, and you don't know if that's gonna continue forever or whether that's a you know, a, a, a current state of affairs and the supply and demand. So it's a, it's a tricky thing we do, but we do the best we can uh, with the estimated educational guess, lack of a better word. And then we have the infrastructure reserve, um, which again is part of your assessment. And we earn interest on this money as, as well as it's sitting in the account. And the infrastructure is all your other items that we do every year. Dam maintenance, uh, the road maintenance, which are, you know, the five miles road we do each year, give or take where we pave uh, our culvert maintenance, which has basically been slip lining all our culverts over the last few years. Uh, forest management, which historically has just been, you know, cutting trees down that are dead or, or safety issue, or when we have a, a storm uh, and, we have, and we have to clean up. But we did add some money into the forest management um, uh, infrastructure reserve for next year, because hopefully you all read Mary's BBL last week or a couple of weeks ago, which talks about the, the big three going into next year. Um, and our forest management and care for our natural environment is, is one of them. Uh, we don't know what that's gonna cost or what the potential there is, but we did put some money in there to help get some uh, professional consultant information to help us decide how we're gonna go forward and better maintain our natural resources that we have within Conacy. And then the last one is the emergency reserve uh, which is fully funded, that's capped at now $730,000. Um, and that account sits there in case of an emergency, just like it sounds. Um, something that might, clear, might come into that, if, if we haven't had one lately, but if you had a huge ice storm, I think we had an ice storm seven, eight years ago, and there's a couple hundred thousand dollars in, uh, in cleanup expense. So it's items like that that you might, might have, a, whatever it could be. Uh, so it's just sitting there in case we need it. So here's how it breaks down. We have the 730,000 in the emergency fund that stays capped right now at that number. Um, in the beginning balance of the capital reserve right now is $1,119,000. Uh, that's where we think we'll be at the year, uh, beginning of the year, either end. $693,000 from your assessment. Uh, we'll be spending $758,000 from the capital reserve and have an ending balance of a little over a million dollars by the end of 2022. And then the infrastructure, you'll see the same thing, uh, balance at 483, we'll fund 777, 71, um, and we'll have an ending balance in that account of $489,000. And then the amenity fund, uh, we have 300, basically $3.9 million a year end, we're hoping, and we're gonna be, we're looking to probably sell about 90 units next year. It's hard to tell whether that's an accurate number or not in today's market, but that potentially could bring in 912,000. Uh, we're looking to spend three, 766 on projects. We'll go into that in a little 
detail in a couple minutes, but we look to end up with about $4 million in the amenity fund uh, at the end of 2022. So you'll see there, if you add them all up, uh, we have a significant amount of money, about $6.3 million in reserves to help us make sure that we have all the proper funding for things that come up along the way. Sort of the breakdown of the infrastructure spending, we'll go over each one of these a little bit. Uh, roads, we're looking to spend about $408,000 on road maintenance. Uh, just so everyone knows, we have about 55 miles of road. That's right, about 110 miles of shoulders, if you have two shoulders on each side. Uh, and we try to do about five miles road each year. That obviously changes depending on uh, the weather and so forth. But roughly, we end up doing about four to five miles every year. Uh, culverts will spend $127,000. Uh, we own 17,477 feet of culverts that go underneath the roadway systems. And we try to slip line 10 to 15 of those each year. And slip lining, basically, the original uh, culverts are, were metal, corrugated metal. A lot of them are starting to fail. Uh, so over the years, we started taking the ones that were beginning to fail or showing wear and tear and slip line them with a, uh, a plastic, um, basically, to uh, that have a useful life of well over 50 years. So once we get through this project, which will probably be about another four or five years, uh, this money will potentially be able to be used for something else. But right now, we're still spending about $125,000 a year to slip line 10 to 15 culverts each year. Uh, forest management, again, I talked a little bit about that. Uh, historically, we spent about $100,000 in forest management. We're looking to spend $138,000 next year. Um, and the additional amount will be used for getting some uh, outside consultant services to help us know, create basically a, a, a survey of what we currently have and where our needs may be going forward. Uh, dams is consistent. We spend about $33,000 a year on maintaining maintenance of the dams. And then we always put about $65,000 um, in this infrastructure as well, just for things that may come up along the way, miscellaneous contract or storm damage, et cetera. So the infrastructure spend next year will be $771,000. In the amenity fund, um, as we stated, quite a bit of money in there. Uh, we do know that Activity and Wellness Center potential project is coming up. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, we are looking at doing uh, five, well, four projects, then some other. So the four projects would be, <clears throat> we want to expand the Adagai Park uh, shelter or pavilion. And we're looking at building a secondary pavilion um, between the current one and the playground area. So that we have more under roof space. So that's around $90,000. Uh, we're also looking at a possible renovation at the equestrian center uh, to turn that into more multi-purpose space. Um, and that would roughly be about $200,000 to do that. Uh, we started some security fencing this year along Carson Creek Road, and we're looking to continue that next year along Walnut Hollow, basically taking the area uh, near where the new multipurpose room and bathroom is and continuing some fence down along uh, uh, East Fork and Walnut Hollow Road until you almost get to the guardhouse. Uh, there are some areas already there that are naturally um, you know, they, that are very steep and so forth that we don't need the fencing, but we, we want to do about, forget the exact number of feet, but it's around $40,000 to do that fencing work on Walnut Hollow. And then the last thing we'd want to do from a project perspective is some who've been around for a while may know or remember this, but the original Cherokee Room expansion years ago, uh, there was on the plan to basically extend the Cherokee Room back towards the golf uh, parking area and create a big storage area, which is, uh, which is very well, very much needed, uh, where we could store tables, chairs, and so forth when we're doing different events. And then when you're doing uh, our special events like uh, music, uh, cats, corral, where we have the big stage and all that, right now we, we actually store that off site. We have to bring it here every single time we have an event um, and set it up and so forth. If we had that storage, we could keep the, that. Uh, that here, the stage and everything here at our location here at the Cherokee. So um, they took that out of the plan years ago, but we're looking to add that back in. Um, the good news there is that when they 
did take that out of the plan. They did put the infrastructure in at the time where they did put the footers in uh, during the time of this construction of the Cherokee Room so that that expansion could happen at a later date, which we're recommending we go forward with doing. And then we will continue to spend around $75,000 to continue moving forward uh, with the wellness activity building planning. Uh, we have some money this year and this money will help us get to that point so that we can bring you a good uh, proposal with good estimated costs going forward for an activity and wellness center, hopefully by the end of this year or beginning of next year, uh, where we'll be able to present that to the community. In the capital expenditures, there's uh, six items in here. There's more than six that are being replaced. These are the only big ones. The rest of them are smaller items, so we didn't go into all those. Uh, but we have to replace um, vehicle four, which is a 1991 truck in the community maintenance operation. That will cost 68,000 to replace that truck. Uh, we have another, uh, the V12 unit, which is a 2012 Chevy truck at $67,000. We have two greens mowers that are scheduled to be replaced, um, and both of those need to be replaced. Those are $57,000 each. Uh, we are the four original pickleball courts, which were put in where the original tennis court was. Uh, they all need to be refurbished at $78,000. And this paving at RV1 has been on the schedule for numerous years, and we keep pushing it and pushing it, but it's at a point now that it needs to be done, so that's $50,000 as well. So that hits all the, the numbers part of the budget. So where do we go from here? So what we want you to do is send in um, any questions you have uh, to us. Um, and then next on October 18th, we will respond to those questions and comments about the proposed budget in a format similar to what we're doing today. Um, assuming that we answer all your questions and we're good to go, the board will meet the following day on October 19th at 3 p.m. And the board votes on approving the 2022 budget and, and to present it to the members. We're gonna do something a little different this year because we are in the 2022 year, 20th century. Uh, the budget vote will be sent to all voting members in an email. So we're gonna, add, we're gonna have an electronic voting system this year uh, for the budget. So what will happen is you will get an email, all the voting members will get an email from Sharon Jenkins, which who you all know, at conacyfalls.com. And what it will have is a SurveyMonkey link that will contain a budget overview, an FAQ document, a YouTube link to this presentation, a section where you will fill out your name and your member number, and then a selection that you'll make on the budget vote question, which is either for or against to be selected. For anyone who does not, any voting member who does not have an email on file with us, will be mailed the voting package. If you don't, if you have not uh, given us an email and you don't get anything from us email way wise, you will get a package. If you want to get an email, you need to uh, contact the administration office and give us your email address if you want to be part of the, um, the electronic survey. But assuming that you've had that opportunity for many years and haven't done it, I'm assuming you don't want that, and that's fine. So you'll be sent a voting package, and you'll be able to uh, return it via in person or in mail to the administration office. So then the, on November 29th will be the deadline for the vote. And then on December 3rd, the election committee will meet, and they'll count the budget votes, and then the results will be sent out as soon as possible by eblast later that day. And then on December 6th, the board will meet again <laughs> to announce the 2022 budget results, which you'll already know. But technically, they then ratify the budget, which makes it, puts the budget in stone for the next year and allows us to then build the assessment in January uh, for all the individual owners. So in, so in conclusion, your CFPOA is in a good financial condition. As always, we have no debt. Uh, disciplined expense management, strong reserves. Um, we continue to improve our financial controls and informa information technology. Um, the, these budgets continue to uh, help us stay on, uh, uh, stay on track for our strategic plan for our community and provides for improvements that have been identified as essential to the present 
and future well-being of Conestee Falls. Obviously, we've learned over the last couple of years, there is no such thing as a perfect budget. Things happen, the world revolves around us, but this budget represents the best efforts of the CFPOA administration, the board, the finance committee, and we hope you will support it enthusiastically as well. So in the meantime, what we'd ask you to do, if you have any questions based on today's presentation, is to email those questions to, or comments to cfpoa at conestefalls.com by Thursday, October 14th at 5 p.m. Um, if you, still, you can still use CFPOA at Comporium.net, that's, that's, we will still get that email, but we are trying to transition to the CFPOA at ConnessyFalls.com. We think that's a more appropriate email uh, for our organization, and we're, we're doing a transition over to that. So we thank you for your interest and attendance today. Again, uh, send in your questions and comments, and we will answer them on the 18th, and we will go from there. Do you have any comments you want to make, Mary, to end the presentation? No? So I guess that's all we will be doing today. So thank you, everyone. Have a good afternoon and take care of yourself. Thank you very much.